So we continue now. Uh, last year at that time, the company that uh, the next speaker represents has announced uh, 156 million users. This year, around the same time, the number is 173. And the digital payments landscape is getting more and more competitive, but obviously still nobody to dethrone them. And uh, talking about what is next, here on the stage, we'll be having a long friend of mine and uh, general director of, uh, for PayPal for Turkey and Middle East, North Africa region, Kivan Shonan. Kivan, welcome on stage. It's great pleasure having you here. I will be hanging out this to, to Yasemin. Yasemin, here you are. Hello. Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for that introduction. Come on, Chonan. I run uh, PayPal for Middle East, North Africa, and Turkey. Today, I'll briefly talk about the next phase of digital payments and what I've been observing as PayPal um, as the trends and challenges, um, and uh, particularly around uh, the, what drives this digital payments and digital native consumers in the space and their needs and their, uh, their likes. Um, so, as you all know, um, there has been a very recent follow of digital payment strategy. Like digital payment trends in the world has evolved over the last two to three years particularly. And there isn't a day a new type of innovation, new type of payments that we don't necessarily hear about. Um, one thing is that often in those innovations is uh, seemingly more evident in the, in the exercise is actually uh, that the transaction, the payment innovation, is no longer around seamless exchange of money. It's beyond that. It has evolved into something more that, which transforms and enhances consumer relationship that the businesses have. It's not over transacting. It's actually how the whole relationship is evolving uh, towards the more innovation in that sense. Um, Consumers themselves are looking more utility and more uh, better experience in that transaction. So they're not looking only just to give you the money and move on. They're looking at the experience itself to be more delightful. Um, as a result of it, I guess there are three particular topics I would like to address. One is the, uh, the trends that we're seeing, how the payment landscape is evolving. The challenges that the retailers particularly have in this environment. And then finally, uh, the drivers of this force, which we'll talk about digital natives, which PayPal passionately names them as MoMA movers. And what do, we, uh, what do they want? What, how do they drive this, this change? Uh, to look back, payment landscape has been stable for the uh, number of decades. The structure was so um, established, it hasn't been disrupted for longer than 30, 40 years. There were a very clear um, infrastructure. On the one hand, there was acquirers and issuers. On the one hand, there were very profitable business models that is run by card schemes worldwide, and a very basic infrastructure that, that where only the merchants pay as a part of that transactional step. This hasn't changed for a long time, until maybe 99 PayPal came, and there was, as the growth of e-commerce happened, we landed on that, that growth. And now we see a more of a disruption in the business. Even ourselves, we see a lot of disruption, which is coming, obviously, with everyone said about the mobile uh, technology that brings that um, enablement. The other side of it is where the consumers are evolving, which is a rapid transformation in terms of how and when and how um, and where they want to pay. So it's a very important aspect which drives for additional choice and convenience for the consumers, which complicates uh, the expectation of the retailers. And uh, as more innovation, more providers of mobile payment services evolve, retailers' world is also become a bit more complicated because um, uh, they want to be part of this mobile movement. They want to offer new and alternative payments, but there are so many of them, it's hard to integrate into one of those. We, uh, as PayPal, position ourselves as a, a, a solid enabler. So we do not necessarily only see ourselves as a provider of PayPal wallet, but as a, as a full um, global operating system for payments. So this is where we try to position ourselves again. Um, and um, we, uh, we've been uh, 
only a payment marquee in, 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 the, in the space uh, for a long time since we established ourselves. But now we're moving into a, a, a situation in which we process all transactions, all type of transactions in a single integration setup. So uh, this is important for the retailers because 34% of European uh, shoppers' choice um, influenced by the alternative payment methods. So roughly about, if you look at uh, Ipsos research, 35% of those consumers do actually look into what payment methods are accepted on that particular retailer, online or offline. So this drives importance, therefore uh, makes life a bit more complicated for the retailers themselves. There are two factors that drive this um, um, uh, issue, right? Um, mobility and connectivity. Um, if you go back over the period of how mobile uh, evolved, there were four particular type of services emerged as a part of the mobile uh, revolution, if you will. One was obviously instant messaging and communication. The other is about the news that we have access to on time, uh, fully, 24 hours a day, etc., which is around information. The games and type of entertainment that is moved into the, uh, that space. And the fourth was about the uh, mobile transaction. However, mobile payment itself have uh, captured low adaptation in the beginning. Uh, this has influenced by multiple uh, aspects, but more importantly, the switching, switching costs of the consumers. So the switching costs, if they're already attached to an online payment method, they were less inclined to move into a new forms of mobile payment uh, issues. And this has uh, tra tra traditionally, over the last, since 2008 to 2014, any attempt to solve mobile payments has been uh, not necessarily so much embraced by the consumer itself. The only time we start to see this change has been when we could call that as a digital payments uh, new uh, revolution, if you will, is 2014. Uh, roughly, uh, in, since 2014 particularly, the payment technology has increasingly become more mobile. Uh, so much so that roughly about 1 billion transactions out of 4 billion that we process as PayPal is now strictly on mobile. So 25% of PayPal worldwide transactions are actually on mobile, which is a, a tremendous growing potential. And actually, it's expected to grow roughly around 68% year on year. And um, if you look at the, some of the researches, you will see 33% of online consumers so far have done a purchase last year on mobile. And uh, this equals to roughly about 16% of their online shopping. So, uh, they spent uh, roughly their 16% of budget strictly on uh, mobile aspects to it. And by 2017, uh, going forward, we see the mobile commerce itself is growing roughly 35% a year. So it's clear that people moving from more desktop to mobile, everyone said that, and the digital technology is also driving this change as the likes of Uber and Airbnb and any uh, type of uh, retailers uh, move on to this space the growth is going to be in evidence. Um, but it's not also about technology, it's also about people. Let's talk about that for a little bit. Uh, clearly, there is a drive for cashless society. As people move on uh, from cash to coin, roughly about 51% of transactions, and this is more Western data, uh, is, no uh, is, is, is no longer cash or coin. Therefore, there is a strong uh, growth towards the cashless society. Um, and as we become more mobile, um, the whole transaction piece is also moving to, towards that. So consumers embrace this technology more and more so, particularly the younger generations. And they rep, uh, moving on to, uh, ex uh, move on to this mobile experience more so. But it is also important, and most of the technology in the past, the innovations in the past, were evolved towards more how we can replicate a card experience in the, in, the, in the time of payment. So this is no longer necessarily produced any results. So it was not necessarily how you play, replace a credit or, or cash at the point of transaction, but how you create a value in this process for the, uh, 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 for the consumers to take part in. How do you solve the pain points that they face? Um, so 
we see this as a third phase of digital money, of money or, or trade evolution. First was cash and coins. If you go way back, it was maybe uh, the bartering. Then it was credit cards. And now we're seeing entirely a mobile uh, era. And the, the inform, important aspect of it is are the na digital natives. We call them as mobile movers because they are literally have their entire life on the palm of their hands. So who are these people? Um, if you look at the numbers, vast majority of mobile transactors today, mobile movers today, are actually aged between 18 and 34. Um, and they account around 59% of mobile shoppers. So who people shopped on mobile, 59 of them are in the age brackets of 18 to 34. They use actively their mobile as a central hub for their lives, everything they do in terms of how they consume news and how they participate in commerce. And um, um, they, uh, they are relatively early adopters, although they are passionate adopters at the same time. And they actually also influence the right, uh, most of the other trends in the industry itself. Their main choice is obviously mobile device, although most of them do have tablets or e-book readers, etc. cetera. Um, they use more significantly um, and expect all the businesses to have a mobile app or at least a mobile responsive site. So when we asked the question, 100% of them said any business should have a mobile app and or a mobile responsive site. 81% saying at least mobile ready site. Um, they are financial value seekers. They are financial savvy. They look after the value when they go forward and optimize to get the best deal aspect of it. But they do not hesitate to pay for more for goods and services uh, if it fits their image, if they're helping them, and also if their value system, which is an important factor for that. So uh, there are six drivers that I'll talk about quickly uh, what drives the adoption of digital transactions for these uh, consumers. One is the performance acceptancy. So the benefit um, that's uh, offered by the technology is definitely one driver. The trust, the willingness to consumer to take part in that digital transaction, and if, especially a faceless transaction, they have to have that. Perceived risk needs to be low, they need to see the companies they engage with actually managing the actively that risk. The social influence. This is interesting because the, the, to what extent which consumers use um, um, a particular technology, they look at their influencers and they say, do they approve them as a part of their, uh, as, a, as, a, as a technology use case. Effort expectancy it shouldn't be difficult, obviously, for these people to use it. And there's a final aspect is that what we call is hedonic motivation, uh, the pleasure driving that technology. How do they expect? Uh, they need to be uh, a cheerleaders of that particular technology. As a result of it, uh, the findings show that uh, consumers are very sensitive in terms of the risks of digital transactions. They rely a lot on the social influence uh, of digital payment services. Um, performance, the fact that it's painless is the most important aspect of it. The novelty of digital services. This is, a, this is an interesting because some of the experiences we build is like it's kind of novel to the consumers, right? And as a result of it, uh, it's, in the beginning it looks quite novel and some people jump into using it. But very quickly, this novelty uh, becomes um, a common practice. Uh, if you look at the practices of Uber and how they actually used um, a payment in terms of how they drive experience in a much more uh, pleasant way, is a good evidence to that. Uh, uh, PayPal's asset actually brain tree processes all that payments, which is, becomes extremely frictionless and is a part of the success that comes within that context is also important. Um, the friction is definitely the, the one aspect that requires digital. Uh, Frugo uh, friend was also talking about it. The checkout experience is important. On the consumer side is obviously how quickly they pay and move on. How invisible that payment is, is important to them. Um, and for merchants as well, how do they uh, offer all the benefits of the platforms that, that's out there to their consumers to drive more sales. Um, 
Having said that, uh, over the t years, it has improved a lot in terms of how the checkout experiences have evolved. There is still a friction because there's a gap between what technology can provide today versus what the consumers want and expect. The gap is big because we also propel that, right? We, as we evolve into a new technologies, the perception on the consumer side to be, have a 0% friction. 47% of shoppers abandon their purchases on mobile devices due to the friction. And 51% of European consumers do not feel safe entering any financial information, especially credit card information, on a mobile device. So this is, um, this is a lot what we try to do as PayPal. We're trying to remove that friction. We try to make sure that uh, the experience that consumers have is very um, seamless to, to that extent that they don't real, realize there's a payment in that process. Um, so we have actually a, a, a couple of products in that size, which we call OneTouch, which is a one single integration for all types of different um, uh, integrations, including um, in, for some instances and some markets, Bitcoin, or Apple Pay, etc. Um, and it is, uh, it is basically uh, removing the need for any passwords, any user logins for the consumers, especially after their first login and identify it themselves. Uh, we showcase a number of uh, pioneering apps in Turkey that uses this, 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 this product for us. And as, as screens get uh, smaller, the number of clicks become the most important aspect of it. Um, so a quick aspect around um, this. This is getting more complicated in the payment space. So its fragmentation of the space is really evident. Um, there are, if you go to each and every local market, there is definitely a startup or a new innovation or an incumbent that is working on mobile technology space. So if it comes to, as a retailer, what you do in this space, it becomes clear that you have to cooperate. You have to cooperate with existing players as well as startups. You have to cooperate with different uh, levels of uh, people to be able to provide the consumers what you need to uh, do to generate more sales. So as a, as a, as a final comment, um, probably three aspects that, can, uh, that I can pass on to you as a retailer, if you're a retailer in this space. In order to make a really good and digital and native payment experience to globally, or also to locally, to all the, uh, 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 all the consumers you want to address, you have to partner with, um, uh, with multiple uh, providers in the payment space and let them help you to drive the sales. As much as use the existing uh, platforms, but look that into a, a new way so that can build the, the experience and the consumer uh, aspect of it uh, much better. And rather than that, trying to build your own payment platform, focus on what you can do best in order to attract consumers and work with the other providers in that space. This is, uh, this is uh, my presentation today, but thank you very much for your time. Yeah. Any questions regarding the anything? I'm happy to take that on. Sometimes better with questions than, than speech. Thank you. Thank you.